Do you want to learn how you can deploy your own database that scales automatically? That's exactly what we're going to show you in this video. DynamoDB is a database system from Amazon Web Services where they manage the whole infrastructure for you. This means once you've set up a table, it will automatically scale with the data you put on it and you don't have to deal with the servers or managing any of the database systems. This is really good because it reduces a lot of the workload of running databases. Now we're in our code again and we're in our serverless YAML file. We want to add a DynamoDB table to our account and DynamoDB is a resource. So what we need to do is scroll down to the bottom of the page where we're to find our resources. Here we've got our demo bucket. So we need to set up a new resource at the same level as that. So it lines up with there. We need to define the name of the resource. So I'm going to go with my DynamoDB table. And we need to set a type on this as we did with the bucket. So type of AWS colon colon S uh, Dynamo DB colon colon table. As well as that, we need to set some properties to define how our Dynamo DB table works. So the properties that we need to set are first a table name, which I'm going to set in a little bit. As well as that, we need to define the attributes that we know are going to be on every single row in that table. For now, that's just going to be an ID. So we need to set up some attribute definitions. So this is going to be an array. So you use a hyphen and then define the attribute name, which for us is going to be ID. We also need to set up an attribute type, which for us again is going to be a string because it's going to be an ID, which is a unique identifier. As well as that, we need to set up a key schema. And inside this, again, we need to define some properties about these attributes. So for us, attribute name, so that we know we're still talking about the ID field, we need to set a key type of hash. This just helps Dynamo make sure that it knows exactly what format all of the attributes that you're writing are in. The last thing we need to set up is the provisioning of the resource. So this means how is AWS going to allow us to use their CPU utilization to add and remove things from this table? There are two ways of doing this. One of them is to say, I want to have this many resources available at all times so that I can read and write from my Dynamo table. That's called a provisioned resource. The good thing about that is it is slightly cheaper in the long run if you're using a consistent amount. The issue is if you're not using a consistent amount, then you're getting billed for having a part of a CPU ready when you don't need it and when you're not using it. As well as that, if all of a sudden your business doubles and you use twice as many reads and writes to your DynamoDB table, that won't scale. So you need to go in and manually update that or do the more complicated process of provisioning the auto scaling feature in DynamoDB. For us, a much better way of doing this is paying every time 
we read or write from the table. That kind of sounds scary, but the amount that we're paying is absolutely tiny. This means that when we're not writing at all, we're not paying a penny. But as we scale, it will automatically scale with us, which is much better for us. To define this, we need to set a billing mode. And that billing mode will be pay underscore per underscore request. So now that's all defined, we need to go back and define our table name. The table name we're going to be using might actually need to be referenced in multiple different places, such as in a Lambda, later on saying I want to call that DynamoDB table. To make it more accessible around this file, what we're going to do is we're actually going to define a custom variable and then reference it here, which means we can then reference it, say, inside the environment variables in a Lambda. So if we scroll up to custom, we can add a new variable simply by just typing a new property. In this case, table name. And this table is going to be called player-points. We can now scroll back down to our resource and to our DynamoDB table. And we can use referencing. So if we put dollar sign and then curly braces, we can say that we are now referencing a variable. This variable is in this file. So we write self to reference this, this file itself. And the value is custom.tableName. So we write custom.tableName. If we save all of this and go back into our terminal, we can now run SLS deploy. And what will happen is it will build this DynamoDB table. As with always, serverless deploys are, do take a little while. So I'll get back to you when that is completed. Now that that is completed, we can check that it's all been deployed by going over into our AWS account. If we move over, we can now search for DynamoDB. Inside here, we can click on our tables and see a list of all of our tables. We can see that we have player points table. And if we click in here, we have absolutely no items, but we do have the ID, which is the only field that we know about at this time. If we want to add a row into this table, we can click on create item. In here, we can give it an ID of say one, two, three, four, five. As well as that, we can then add and append a new string. So this is going to be say name. And my name is Sam. As well as that, we're going to append another thing, but this time it's going to be a score. So which is going to be a number. And we're going to set score and the number is going to be, I'm going to say have score of 12. If we now hit save, we can see that in our database table, we have an ID of 12345, a name of Sam and a score of 12. This is in the database and it'll be there forever. And if we want to use AWS SDK, we could use functions to get this data or even add more data which is exactly what we're going to be doing in the next video. In this video, we have deployed our AWS DynamoDB table. We learned how we can set it up and then manually add data through the DynamoDB UI. With this knowledge, you can now go and deploy your own database tables and then link those into your own software products. You can migrate from existing systems into DynamoDB yourselves. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up because it helps me and it helps the YouTube algorithm show this video to more interested developers. And if you want to see more in this serverless series, make sure to subscribe and then you'll get updates when I release a new video. 
Thank you, and I'll see you next time.